Keyframing is both one of the funnest and most tedious parts of editing. But I have heard through the editing grapevine that Mr. Alex Tech has solved this problem. Jake, did he? Alex. 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 Cheers, my man. Today is one of those days when I just sit here on my editing throne and just look up to you with nothing but smiles and adoration. For those of you who have not heard, Mr. Alex Tech, who is one of the greats when it comes to teaching DaVinci Resolve, came out with a fancy cool little plugin called Magic Animate V3. And it's gonna save me so much time. I literally like cannot wait to show you guys, but I got to give you some context so you know where I'm coming from and why I'm so excited about this plugin. So first things first, if for whatever reason this is the first time you've seen me, I come from Final Cut. Final Cut's my baby. I used to edit in Final Cut. It's where I learned editing. It's where I really just like my heart was removed from my body and merged into a love and passion for editing. I blame Final Cut for that. But then again, growing up, maturing, sprouting a mustache, becoming a man, I knew I needed to learn DaVinci Resolve. I wanted to branch out, you know? Final Cut was just feeling stale. You know, Final Cut was feeling like I couldn't do some stuff. I wanted to learn new things. I went to DaVinci Resolve and my mind was blown at what you could do without needing a thousand plugins. <laughs> All my Final Cut people out there, you're like, yes, we know the pain. I've got 13,000 plugins to do all kinds of things. I was just shocked because I haven't ever bought a single plugin for DaVinci Resolve until this one that we're talking about today. Wanting to support a fellow creator that I love, but also wanting to like see if it could solve one of my main problems. And it does. And the problem really is just that keyframing is kind of tedious. Now, the part that I find the most tedious, and I think most people find tedious, is doing what is called easing. And hopefully I explain this in a way that makes sense, but easing is just smoothing out the transition between one keyframe and another. So for example, if I'm moving across screen from point A to point B, if I don't have easing, it looks like this. And if I do have easing, it looks like this. It's just got a little bit more of a lifelike physics type look to it because nothing moves at perfect acceleration from point A to point B. That's just not how the world works. And really the best way to do this in DaVinci Resolve is to use Fusion and create keyframes and then click on those keyframes and add the drag points that allow you to smooth the keyframes. Very elegant, very powerful, does exactly what I want it to do all of the time, but can be a little time consuming. Let's wind it back a little bit and let's talk about one of my all time favorite plugins from Final Cut that does exactly what I'm talking about. It removes that tedious easing part from your animations. So let's open up Final Cut Pro so I can show you guys this plugin. So this plugin for Final Cut is called Add Motion and it is Super cool. So first things first, let's create a dorky little Jake animation compound clip of my face on some kind of stock image. Dork McDork. Then let's take this clip, let's go over to effects, go to add motion and drag add motion onto this clip. What I love so much about this plugin is that there is a graphical representation of point A and point B. And then over here in my window, I have various settings and sliders that I can tweak to do an animation from point A to point B. So maybe I want my A scale to be less. Maybe I even want some rotation in the beginning. And then I can just, again, do a quick little animation. It's so simple and so beautiful. And what's even cooler is that I can change the takeoff and the landing. So I can do like ease, expo, snagged, all these different things that allow me to do essentially what you would do in DaVinci Resolve with your spline curves by hand. It just happens automatically with all of these different options. Now, again, in the world of math, adjusting lines and curves has infinite possibilities. There is not infinite possibilities recognized here. For 99% of any kind of animation I would do, they've got every sort of little curve covered, essentially. And it's beautiful because again, if I really wanna go crazy with it, I can do it manually, but in Final Cut Pro, I don't have to F with this. Now, I forgot to mention as well, if you have never used Final Cut Pro, there is no easing 
built into native Final Cut Pro on keyframes. It's crazy. I know, it's insane. Version 10.7 comes out and they're like, oh, we're gonna finally add the ability to like have the timeline scroll while you're watching and you're sitting there just going like, we get these keyframes too? Now the reason I really love this plugin is for YouTube videos. Let me show you. So let's say we have a screen capture piece, right? I do this all the time. I'm capturing my screen right now. <laughs> you guys are seeing this. I work for Dunna, who screen captures all of the time to teach things. It is so YouTube, capturing your screen, animating it, and showing that screen is something we do every single freaking day. Why I love this plugin so much is because say I were to take an adjustment layer over this clip, add, add motion, to that adjustment layer and then set, let's see, make sure that A is set to zero. I wanna start completely zoomed out on the window and then let's say I want to go look at the timeline, which is kind of bottom left. Then I wanna go look at the inspector, which is top right. And then I wanna look at the media viewer, which is in the middle. This plugin makes that whole movement sequence so freaking easy and so simple and everything is eased and looks professional. This is why I love this plugin. So on this adjustment layer, I've got A position set to zero. I'm going to scroll over here so that I'm kind of in B position land. I'm going to scale up my B and change my X and my Y, which once you start changing it, then you can just click and drag in the media viewer to have that. And now, from the beginning, I can also change the duration. Say I want it to be a little slower. I can punch in and I get a nice, smooth, eased keyframe to the timeline. And so it punches in and then it holds that position. Now I want to move the screen up to the inspector. Make a quick cut, go to that adjustment clip. You'll see that it wants to redo exactly what I had before, which is starting wide and punching in. Well, why I love this plugin so much is I can come up here to the add motion section, I can click move and I can change it from A to B to B to A. I think you can start to see where I'm going with this. So now it will essentially do the exact opposite of what the last adjustment layer did. So instead of punching in, now it punches out. But the beauty of this is I could actually change A to be scaled in, and the position to be, you know, I could drag on the screen or I could change the X and Y to then go over to the inspector. So now I punch in and then I move up and over. And then again, you're gonna see, this is super easy. I just make another cut to then change B back to A to B. So we're back to starting at A and then have point B, scroll down here, B on, the media viewer and maybe punch in even more. And if we watch this back, I punch in, I move over, and I move over. There's no linear harsh movements. Everything's smooth, which then as a viewer, my eyes want to bleed less. So while this plugin is really good for basic animation stuff, dorky shit popping up on the screen, whatever, it is amazing at this type of workflow and saves you hours without having to do a whole bunch of, you know, line keyframe type stuff in Fusion like you would do in DaVinci Resolve. But like I said, my boy Alex, he has solved this problem. I just bought this plugin today. I've only been playing with it for a little bit today. That's the extent of how far I've played with it. So maybe there is more power than I have explored so far. But what I want to say is, is he has enabled this exact same workflow to now happen in DaVinci Resolve. And now I won't have to go into Fusion for my videos when I'm teaching you guys something or Dunna's videos. This plugin is going to save me so much hassle. So let's just take a quick look at it. Again, we can do some really basic stuff. So here on this timeline, I've got, you know, my Jake Dork <laughs> compound clip. If we wanted to do just like a basic, you know, let's do like a zoom in and say we started at, I don't know, let's do like a 0.5. This should look really good. So we can do a basic zoom in. We can also do a whip control. So we could have like a nice little whip in. Again, I didn't have to, it's, it's eased in, it looks nice. I didn't have to do anything. And with just a few sliders, I'm able to do my dorky character stuff, which is great. But what about that screen capture thing? Well. 
you can do that now. And I'm going to do it all the time. So let's drag an adjustment clip over here. We've got the same clip example as we had in Final Cut. Let's take Magic Animate and drop it on here. So let's do the exact same move. Let's go to the timeline, then the inspector, then the media window, and here's how you can do it with this effect without having to worry about easing and anything like that, and it looks really good. So again, we want to zoom in. Um, we're going to start at zoom one because we want it to be the full screen. And then we are going to, let's say, punch in to about right there. And then let's go to whip control and let's whip in. Now for starters, we want it to start at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, because again, we just want everything to start at the very beginning for this. And then resting location, let's just change to be a little bit more, you know, where the timeline is kind of centered, but maybe not super centered. I don't know, let's center it a little bit more. So now, we're off to a great start. So now to get the same effect, let's just make a cut on this adjustment clip. Now on this second adjustment clip, I don't want any zoom, but I want the zoom resting position to be reflected. So I'm going to leave zoom in on, but I'm going to just double click on the resting destination, copy and paste to the resting start position. And so now the zoom stays the same. But then when I go to whip control, I'm going to double clip, copy and paste the resting location X to start X and resting location Y to start Y because that's where we left off in the last adjustment clip. Now I'm going to go forward and change my resting location on the whip in to be where it goes up to the inspector. So now again, we punch in, looks nice. We go over, looks really nice. And then we're going to just do the exact same thing again where we blade. We're gonna go down to whip control, copy and paste the resting location to the starting location, and then just go over and move the resting location to wherever we want to go. And on this one, I think I do want a little bit of a zoom in, so we'll also do that and just change the resting zoom location. And if we watch that back, we punch in on the timeline, we go up over to the inspector, and we go over and punch in on the media pool or the media, on the media player. And then we can drag that adjustment clip to the end of time and it will hold that position. So I paid Mr. Alex 30 bucks for this plugin. And honestly, in the grand scheme of all of the editing that I do, uh, I don't know, I might pay this back in like one video. <laughs> Probably not that quickly. 30 bucks is going to get paid back very quickly with the time saved with this plugin. It's so easy. Again, it's not quite as easy as Add Motion is in Final Cut. If you're a YouTuber who is doing like screen recordings and reactions and anything like that, tutorials, whatever, in DaVinci Resolve, this might be the best 30 bucks you ever spend. Dude crushed it. All right, guys, that's all from me today. If you like this video, which I hope you did, go down, hit that like and subscribe button. I sure would appreciate it. And also, I just want to say an extra little thank you to our members. You guys are the best. I'll see you guys in the next one. And I am going to get back to editing.